Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you and may the Holy Spirit make you understand His holy word because if you don't understand His word, then how will you have faith to practice it? Isn't it true? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But the person needs to understand. They need to meditate. They have to comprehend the holy text. And only the Holy Spirit can, can enlighten our mind and nobody else. There is no theologian, there is no, no one who is super intelligent and spiritual, nothing like that. Only the Holy Spirit. This is His work, His job to open people's understanding in order for them to understand His Holy Word. And pay attention. You see, I will pass on to you what the Holy Spirit has been touching us to speak. It's not the subject I was going to talk about, but it's the will of God, and I will obey it. Pay attention. Listen, dear friends. There in the book of John, if you open your Bible there, in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, the text says like this, There was a man of the Pharisees. The Pharisees, Pharisees were a group of people who had a line of thought that contradicted all the religious groups, and that's why they were called Pharisees. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, meaning that he was an illustrious man, intelligent, capable. He was brought up to serve as a ruler in the Jewish community. And he came to see Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, which means Master, Lord, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him, unless God is with him. So, he started a conversation with the Lord Jesus, complimenting the work that Jesus was doing, recognizing that Jesus had come from God. But this didn't influence in anything, because Jesus went straight to the point and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus was talking to a religious man, a ruler. I would say a bishop. That's it. A bishop, for example. That knew the law. That knew the law of God very well. But Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't have to say most assuredly. Jesus didn't have to say most assuredly, let alone repeat himself, I say to you, because everything Jesus would speak was true, 
But why does he emphasize by adding, most assuredly I say to you? Because he wants to draw attention, to strengthen this idea, this thought. He wants to emphasize the word that he would speak, which is extremely important for people to understand. That's why he said, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. And I'm adding this emphasis here. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And perhaps you are asking, but see the kingdom of God? See the kingdom of God? I have to be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. That's exactly it. You have to be born again. Because the kingdom of God, dear friends, is a spiritual kingdom. It's an invisible kingdom. Invisible. And in order for a person to be able to see it, they have to be spiritual. They have to be spiritual. They have to be of God. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. They have to be born of God in order to see the kingdom of God. Because we human beings are used to live in a world that is wild, that is materialistic, material, self-centered, selfish, a world where you already know, where everything is upside down and contrary to what the Word of God says. We were born in a demonic world, in a hellish of a world. How can a person who is materialistic see the kingdom that is spiritual, the kingdom of God? Only by being born again. Yes or no? That's what Jesus is saying. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he said more to him. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and a spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. First, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If a person wants to see the kingdom of God, to then enter it, then they won't be able to enter it. Then he said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born, then he's speaking about being born of water and the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. First, he emphasizes the idea of the new birth. If you are not born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now he says, unless one is born of water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If a person is not born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And if they are not born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. When we work with the fast of Daniel for people to do the fast to receive the Holy Spirit, it's for this exact reason. This is the goal of the fast. Because only those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit are born of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul goes as far as saying that he who is not, he who doesn't have the Spirit of God, he is not his. He doesn't belong to him. 
He who doesn't have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. Meaning, the need of people being born again, it's not optional. It's a necessity. It's an urgency. It's an obligation. It's imperative that a person is born again. A person has to be born again. They have to be born again. Because if they are not born again, they can be religious as this man was, as Nicodemus was. He was a ruler, meaning that he was one of the main Jews. He knew the, the word of God perfectly well. He knew the word of God. However, he was not born again. He couldn't see the kingdom of God despite of all the knowledge of the Torah and the laws and the Psalms of the prophets. He had a vast knowledge of the Bible, but he didn't have the new birth. And that's why he hadn't entered he needed to be born again. He had to be born again. Jesus said, it's necessary that you are born again, dear friend. You have to be born again. So sometimes a person is religious, charitable, good. Someone who, who does charity to so many people. They have a very good heart, a very good heart. They are religious, but if they were not born of God, if they are not born of the water, the water baptism and the Holy Spirit, they will not, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, what Jesus is talking about here, dear friends, is eternity, the eternity of our soul. Because the body, we know, will stay here. The spirit will go back to God, which is the intelligence, the wisdom of man, the understanding. But the soul, the soul, in order to see the kingdom of God, they have to be born again. To enter the kingdom of God, one needs to be born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. Which means, in order for you to be born again, as Jesus said to Nicodemus, in order to see the kingdom of God, you need to die. How can you be born again being alive? There's no way. But Bishop, how do I have to die? in order to be born again. Here, it's not about physical death. Jesus is talking about spiritual death, an emotional kind of death. You die to the physical world. You die to your wills, your desires, your lusts. You, you die to your vain ways, your pride. You know what I mean? You die to this world. To die, you know, your objectives are no longer for the things of the world, to conquer material things, to conquer personal things and success. When I, I was about 19 years old, or even younger than that, I was studying and preparing myself to go to university. And at the time, a certain day I was walking towards work. I already spoke about this, but it's worth mentioning again because many people never heard it. So I was thinking, I had books under my arms and I was thinking, walking and thinking about my projects. Oh, I'm going to do this. I was still in doubt whether I was going to do engineering or economics and so on. 
And I was thinking about getting married, building a family naturally, and conquering and so on. Until the moment that the Holy Spirit spoke to me, the same words that Jesus said one day, what does it profit a man if he gains the kingdom of this world and loses his soul? It's pointless. And I understood it. I understood it perfectly well because he's the one who spoke to me. Immediately, I started, I, I turned, you know, the key in my mind. And instead of seeking to conquer material things and the kingdom of this world and to satisfy my flesh, my will, my lusts, my vain ways, my dreams, I went and, I mean, I turned the key in my mind to, to seek the kingdom of God, and I sought it. And the Lord then saw my sincerity, not my holiness. No, I was not, I was not a good person. I wasn't a good person, but I sought Him. And one day, the Holy Spirit revealed, showed me my sin. He showed how dirty I was. Although I didn't live, you know, stealing, lying, I didn't sleep around. I would lie, you know, as a young man and so on. When you hit puberty, you know, we always have those moments of weaknesses. However, I didn't think that I had that many sins. I thought, oh, come on, I don't steal, I don't do this, I don't do that. He showed me my sin, and I could see how dirty, how deep into the mud I was. I could see I could understand why Jesus came into this world to give his life for us. I could see it. And immediately out of despair, seeing hell, I saw hell. What I was afraid, I, I saw it. Not of my own, but the Holy Spirit showed me the hell that my soul was walking towards. Until the moment that I said, help me, show me, teach me, who can save me? And the Holy Spirit showed me the Lord Jesus. And Jesus accepted me. He forgave me. He washed me. In that day, I was born again. In that day, I could understand the Holy Scriptures because up until that moment, everything was enigmatic. But from that moment, I could understand His Word. I mean, I could see the Kingdom of God. The Kingdom of God is spiritual. It's a spiritual Kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom in which God himself reigns over. He leads, he guides. He is the king and lord, the governor, the eternal governor. And the rules of the kingdom of God are rules of justice, of discipline, rules that establish order, and goodness, and love, and forgiveness, and consideration, mercy. Everyone, 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 literally everyone, every human being is a sinner. But what Jesus did on Calvary was to open the door. The door is narrow. 
but it's always open to receive anyone. Anyone. It doesn't matter whether a person deserves it or not. The kingdom of God receives anyone as long as that person will submit, will subject, will submit themselves to the rules of the Holy Spirit, the rules of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we walk according to His will, to His word, according to His rules. God has made many promises to His followers, but He also has many promises of curses to those who reject His mercy and His love. So, when you are enlightened by the Holy Spirit, you can see the kingdom of God. I saw the kingdom of God, and I sought for it. And the Holy Spirit made it possible for me to enter it because He regenerated me. He regenerated me. He made me a new creation. From that day on, I placed inside of me the desire, the huge desire to bring to people what God had given me. And that's what I want. What I want you to have, at least what the Lord God has given me. This is the reason why every day I'm here. It's not that I am a nice person, a very good servant, a servant. No, nothing like that. I am a human being subject to failures and mistakes. However, I've entered this kingdom, the kingdom of God. And therefore, I can tell you, I am a person who had the privilege, the high privilege, the highest privilege to enter the kingdom of God. And that's why I can speak about it, because if I hadn't entered this kingdom, I wouldn't be here talking about it. And everyone who has received the Holy Spirit has had this experience that I had. It's not just me. I wasn't a super chosen person. No. Anyone who receives the Holy Spirit knows the kingdom of God, sees the kingdom of God, enters the kingdom of God. They enter and live in this kingdom. Why? Because this kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness, of love, of forgiveness, of mercy towards everyone, everyone. Even if you are not in the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God has its doors open for you to enter. But you have to enter through the door. There is only one door. The door is open permanently, but you have to enter it and in order for you to enter it you have to let go of your old life you cannot have an old life and a new one at the same time you have to make your own choices and in order for you to start your life in the kingdom of God you have to give up on the kingdom of this world. You have to give up the kingdom of this world. That's it. Your dreams, your personal projects. Oh, Bishop, but this is too difficult. My child, my friends, look, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, either you follow the recipe given by Jesus or you're going to be left outside of the kingdom. 
He cannot do anything. He opens the door. He speaks to you. If you don't accept, what can he do? And it's harsh. It's painful. You want people to come as well to the kingdom of God, but they prioritize more the miserable, mediocre life that limited as well here in this world and afterwards a life not life but eternal death well Jesus said most assuredly I say to you unless one is born of water and the Holy Spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God because it is a spiritual kingdom. In order for you to enter the spiritual kingdom, you have to leave the material kingdom, this wild kingdom, the hellish of this world that you've been living in so far. Did you understand, dear friends? Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And I pray for that to happen. I pray, I ask God for direction in order to speak to you all and give to you what He wants me to give. Because it's clear here, unless one is born again, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But this is, this is not all. Unless one is born of water, to be baptized, to repent from their sins and be baptized in water, meaning it's the funeral, the funeral of your old nature. It's the burial of your own being, your ego. The water baptism needs to be done after repentance, you have to repent first. And repentance is not a feeling. Repentance is action. It's decision. You make the decision to turn your back on what is wrong and start to do what is right. Then, yes, you will be baptized and bury your flesh, the body of sin. And then, yes, once you get out of the water, you have the right, the right to be baptized with the Holy Spirit because you truly left in the water your old nature. And then, yes, you enter the kingdom of God. And then, dear friends, you just have to celebrate, to celebrate with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow. If you want more information, go to a universal church of the kingdom of God. And today we are talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know more about this and what happens with those who one day were born again, go to this Bible study that we are going to have today in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.